All right, welcome everyone. In this video, we're gonna cover how you can create an API gateway using Yarp in .NET. My name is Vasily Lenin and you are watching the .NET architecture and detailed design series where we are covering different interesting topics related to building .NET Core based applications. Before we begin, I've recently released a microservice ready architecture course where I cover everything I learned about building modular monolith based systems over the last five years. So if you are interested in the topic of learning how to build a modular monolith from scratch and all the practices and all the patterns that you will need to adhere to in order to let this system in time evolve into a set of microservices, you can grab the course on the link on the screen. And also the first 200 of you can use the coupon you see over there for an additional discount at checkout. With that said, let's go over to the video. Before we begin, we need to cover what is a reverse proxy and what is an API gateway. A reverse proxy is essentially a component that acts as an intermediary between your client application or your client and your backend servers. In order to reach the servers, the client will have to go through this reverse proxy that stays in the middle. A reverse proxy will usually handle stuff like load balancing, request logging, request compression, and sometimes even security. In the past, I've worked on a setup where we were using a reverse proxy in order to validate the incoming GVT tokens, and the backend API was essentially standing behind that reverse proxy. On the other hand, an API gateway will usually act as a centralized entry point for your backend APIs, acting something like an orchestrator or manager for that plane. An API gateway will also handle stuff like load balancing, authentication, authorization, rate limiting, etc. Long story short, an API gateway is a form of reverse proxy. This is why their definitions are kind of similar. But again, an API's gateway main purpose is aggregation of your API backends. In our case, we are emulate a scenario where we want to decompose a specific monolithic API. So we want to extract the API slash users from the monolithic API into a set of microservices. A reason for that might be, for example, that our API users endpoint is getting hit pretty hard and we would like to scale it out without having to scale the rest of the monolithic application. For that, we will set up an API gateway that we will write in YARP. And our client is gonna be a couple of postman requests that I'm gonna run from my local machine. Now over here in our solution, I have a monolith application and a microservice that exposes those two endpoints, the API slash users, API to do's, and also the microservice is gonna expose an API.correlation endpoint to get the correlation ID that we're gonna set up a little bit later. And also we will add in here an instance endpoint just for our load balancing demo. So. In here, we're gonna end up with three API endpoints. So we have two minimal API setups, each with a Docker file in there. And we also have this API gateway project, which is a bare bones minimal API setup where we have just our web application builder and app.run. To get started with Yarp, we're gonna need to install the package. In this case, it's gonna be Yarp reverse proxy. I'm gonna install it really quick. Once installed, all we need to do is go over here into our builder and say builder.services.add reverse proxy and also load from config. And we're gonna pass in builder.configuration.get section reverse proxy. Let me indent it a little bit. Now, once we have this, we will need to add this reverse proxy to our configuration file and in here specify a couple of things. First of all, we will need our clusters and this will be, first of all, our monolith cluster. And in here, we will need to specify a couple of destinations. In our case, that's gonna be the monolithic API that we have specified over here. So our monolithic API is gonna be our destination. We're gonna name it monolith and specify that we want to add it on address. In our case, it's gonna be HTTP monolith underscore API, which is gonna be the name that we're gonna use in our Docker Compose file. Essentially, besides our monolithic cluster, we will need also the microservices cluster. And in this case, we will also specify our destinations and in here we will need two destinations. So it's gonna be microservice underscore one 
with an address uh, microservice API API and also I'm just gonna copy paste this so it's gonna be microservice 2 microservice API 2 and with this our cluster setup is finished so essentially we have two destinations the monolithic cluster and the microservices cluster which essentially will have the microservice 1 and microservice 2 with their respective addresses now I'm gonna collapse this one here comma and inside here and now we need to define a couple of routes those routes are gonna be equivalent to this API users, correlation, instance, and to do. So going back over here, we will need first of all the users route. In here, we need to specify the cluster ID. I will have to copy this monolithic cluster in here and define a match rule. In our case, this is gonna be based on path. So we want to match everything that is API users then in here we're gonna use a wildcard catch all so all the requests that will go on this path api slash users are gonna initially be redirected to our monolithic cluster the second route that we want to specify is to do route and in here we're gonna specify the cluster id as monolith and i'm just gonna copy this setup in here paste it and instead of users it's gonna be to do's finally we will need a third route setup, which is gonna be for instance route. And we want to redirect it to our microservices cluster, microservices cluster, and in here is gonna be instance. With this, a basic setup is in place. So essentially we have specified a couple of clusters. So our monolith, our microservices, and also define a couple of rules. So first of all, all the requests right now for the users will be redirected to our monolithic cluster. Also the to-dos are gonna be redirected to our monolith. With the configuration place, going back to our program.cs, over here we will also need to add app.mapreverseproxy and with that we're ready to go and debug the solution. And over here I'm gonna bring up my postman. So I'm running a request against my API gateway which is hosted on port 4000 and running the API slash users. So if I send this request right now, you can see that we have gotten our response of the users and also we can run the to do's over here. So if I send this one, we should get our response. Oh, sorry, yeah, to do's should have an ID in here. So if I get it now, it's one is prepare food and the second to do is wash the car. Essentially, right now, our API gateway is redirecting traffic to our monolithic API for the API slash users and API to do's. On a side note, the microservice API 1 and microservice API 2 have been started with an API instance count being 1 and 2 respectively. So if I go to the postman in here and instead of API to do's, I type instance we should get either one or two because by default it's going to use the round robin approach to routing the traffic. Now if we want to change that behavior we'll go to our app settings.json, hide this setup in here and go to our microservices cluster and inside here we'll need to specify a load balancing policy and in here we can specify a couple of values. Some of the load balancing policies are random or we can use round robin or we can use, for example, a list request policy. So all of these are pretty valid, but if you want to write your own custom load balancing policy, that's pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna stop everything in here. I'm gonna remove this value in here and say that we want to use a tenant based load balancing policy. To do that, we'll have to add a new class in here. So tenant based load balancing policy. The setup process is pretty easy. We just need to inherit from I load balancing policy and implement this specific interface. First of all, we will need a name. So public string name. And in this case, it's gonna be tenant tenant based and we will have to match this with the one in our app settings and remove it over here since it was generated over there 
So I'm gonna paste a bit of code here. So the idea of this load balancing policy is essentially we're gonna retrieve a tenant ID from our request headers and based on that tenant ID, we're gonna route traffic to the specific microservice. Based load balancing policy is in place, we will have to add it to our program.cs and in here, I'm gonna skip it like this, services and in here add singleton I load balancing policy and specify the tenant based load balancing policy. And just like that, you're gonna be able to use the load balancing policy on your end. So debugging it all up, going back to my Postman instance. And in here, I believe I already have it inside the header. So yeah, microservice two. If I run this request right now, it should get to microservice two, the instance. And if I specify here one, I should go to microservice one. So just like that, you can add your own load balancing policies. Also, Yarp can help you with rate limiting your APIs. So that's done pretty easy also. I'm gonna stop everything in here. And after the add reverse proxy, or rather really before it, we might want to add rate limiter. And in here, specify a couple of options. In our case, I want to go with the most basic one, fixed window limit. I want to name it fixed window policy and specify a couple of options in here also. So opt dot window and we're gonna specify a time span of let's say from seconds of 10 seconds. Opt permit limit, let's say we want to permit a maximum of three requests per 10 seconds. And yeah, let's make it 20 just for the demo purpose. However, that's not enough. Also, we'll have to add in here app dot, app dot, I believe it was use rate limiter. Yep, in here. With that in place, we can copy the fixed window policy, go to our app settings.json, go to our routes, and let's say we want to go to our cluster dot one. And for our users, we want to specify a rate limiter policy. And our case is gonna be fixed window policy. Debugging the whole setup in place, going over to my Postman instance, and I want to go over to the user's API endpoint, request it once, twice, thrice, and over here we should get a 503, essentially service un unavailable, which is our rate limiting policy hitting in. Now, if we wait a little bit and I send the request once again, I should get a 200 response. And if I try to spam the API endpoint once again, I am again getting a 503 third service unavailable. Now, that said, I'm gonna stop everything in here. And let's assume that you are going distributed. And the first thing that you would want to do is essentially add a correlation ID to all of your requests to see how your request travels throughout the setup of microservices that you're running right now. How you can approach that scenario pragmatically is essentially adding the correlation ID generation to your API gateway. And in there, if the correlation ID was not provided from the client allocation, just generate it and add it to the request headers. To do that, we will need to add reverse proxy builder extensions class. And to speed things up, I'm gonna paste in here a simple implementation of this kind of logic. Essentially, what we will want to do is specify a correlation ID header key. In our case, it's gonna be X correlation ID and add a transformation for our request. And essentially, first of all, check if there is any correlation ID in the header. If yes, we are gonna return valid as completed. If not, we're gonna generate a new GUID and add it to the request header. And this class should be static also, so we can use this add correlation ID extension method inside our program.cs. And after add reverse proxy, I would want to add the correlation ID. And just like that, we are adding the correlation ID. By the way, a retrieval endpoint for this add correlation ID is found inside the microservices under API slash user slash correlation ID. And since we wanted to migrate the user's functionality out of the monolithic API, we are gonna just replace the user's route to point to our microservice cluster instead. 
So debugging this solution once again, everything is up and ready. I'm calling the API users endpoint and retrieving the users list. And if I specify over here a call relation API endpoint and send this request, we can see that we have added the GUID in here. And if I send it once again, it should change. And yep, as you can see, it already changed. So just like that, you can add correlation IDs to all of your requests from the API gateway. And that does it for the video. Essentially, we have set up a simple API gateway in front of our monolith and microservice APIs and routing traffic based on the migrated functionality. Quick disclaimer, Yarp loads the configuration and is able to load the configuration on the fly. So using it up in combination with something like console, Spring Cloud Config, Azure App Configuration Service, or I don't know what Amazon or Google are running on their own, essentially will give you a lot of flexibility to load configurations on the fly without having to redeploy the API gateway, which in my book is a really good thing. But with that, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, share this video with your friends, and stay tuned until the next time. See ya!